Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and in today's video, I'm going to be setting up my weekly spreads for the rest of October. You may notice something a little bit different today. My background has slightly changed. That's because I'm setting up my new office and the walls are blue. As always, a very quick flip through of my spreads for October before we get started. Here's my cover page, which I'm sure you've seen multiple times by now. Still not over it, still think it's amazing. My monthly log, as well as a to-do list, my goals, my habit tracker, my first two weeks of the month, the fact that I'm an ambassador for Archer and Olive, which is so exciting. And then let's get into planning week 42. I did like doing the reels, however, sorry, the shorts on YouTube, however, I think I prefer doing long form videos, so we will stick to that. And I'm just going to plan out my week 42. By starting off with the same font that I've been using for this entire month, I'm just going to write week 42. I've reimagined the font for specific letters because I only had the letters from the word October to base myself off of. So I'm just going to kind of imagine them this way. I think it looks good and I feel like it matches the aesthetic or the vibe of the font from October so pretty happy and then once I've written everything down I'm going to do my little planner for Monday through Friday so the days of the week just so that I can put in any events and plans that I have in usually it's just my work schedule but recently I've been putting in some plans to have dinner with friends or deadlines for example this is a black acrylograph from Archer and Olive I love acrylographs I know I say this in every single video but they're really really fun even though they can be a little bit frustrating at times anyway once I've done all of that I'm just going to write underneath the 42 my just to-do list I'm not going to have the typical like to-do list based off of the days of the weeks this time because I'm just going to list them all out and then I'm going to plan it based on when I have availabilities and usually because I'm working Monday to Friday although recently I've asked for Fridays off now so Monday to Thursday I'm going to be able to more or less plan my weekend so Friday Saturday and Sunday based on the times of the day so that I can more accurately place things and do things and that will be a lot better so I'm just going to have a to-do list and I'm going to associate it to a specific time of the day on my weekend because usually the things on my to-do list are all related to bullet journaling and things that I need to get done for my YouTube channel. As always, I'm going to include some decorations in my letters and I'm also going to add some cute little coral flowers, whatever you want to call them, on the sides as well because that is the theme that I'm going for for the last couple of months of the year. Now, you may have noticed that I'm making a mistake. I did not notice that I was making a mistake until I had literally finished the entire spread. But anyway, if you haven't figured out the mistake, awesome. I'm about to tell you anyway. So the mistake is that I had already done all of the lines for the days of the week, except for Friday is also a day of the week. And I also decided to put it in this area here. And that means that my numbers are wrong. So Friday is not the 22nd, it is the 21st. And of course, I didn't realize that until I'd painted everything. So let's pretend Friday is the 22nd for the moment. And then I'll get back to that one to fix the mistake later because it is pretty easy to fix. I thought it was going to be complicated. I thought I was going to have to redo a lot of things, but actually it worked out really, really well. For this one, I'm just going to do the first letter of the day, so Friday, and then I'm just going to have the number next to it. Again, if you want to copy the font for these letters, I just used this font from Pinterest. It's a very standard font. I think it looks good with everything, literally. It's very, very pretty. It does take a while to grasp or like to get the hang of because personally, I thought it took ages to like finally get the right look of the number two. I'm starting to get the there, but it's still a little bit wonky sometimes. Anyway, I'm just going to trace out 22 on the side. I alternate the numbers from being on the side and underneath. It depends on how small the letter is. If it's a big letter, it's going to be on the side. And if it's a small letter, it's going to be underneath. I'm also going to add in my coral decorations, of course, for this one. And because the numbers are really small, I've decided to just do like this little teardrop shape in all of them. Does it really add anything? Probably not. Probably could have left it blank, but because I have these little corals and everything, I decided to put them. For for the Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to be time blocking quite a bit because I have a lot of things to get done before I head off at the end of November to Mauritius for my grandma's birthday. And so I'm just going to time block everything and I will show you how I fill this in at a later stage. But the concept of time blocking is pretty straightforward. I think I have a video on my channel about time blocking so you can check that one out over here if you're interested in that. It is a digital time blocking which is definitely easier than manually doing it all the time. I do have manual examples somewhere also in my 
my June plan with me as well as my July one. I did use a time blocking system for quite a while but I did have a different layout but the idea is always the same, time blocking is not a very hard concept. If you're like me and you tend to procrastinate I definitely recommend the Pomodoro technique and the idea is to work for 25 minutes straight, have a 5 minute break, work 25 minutes, do that 4 times and then have a long break for 15 minutes. This especially helps me when I'm working from home and doing all of my paintings and filming and editing because I'm at home which means that I tend to get lazy so I do procrastinate a lot so using the Pomodoro technique is really really helpful for me. Anyway that was a mini tangent let's get back into this spread. I'm going to add on some more coral decorations using a white acrylic graph. As you know the colors that I'm using this month are solely white black and orange. I feel like I was kind of getting bored of using these three colors all the time by the end of doing this but I love how it looks and I do love the font so I'm pretty happy with that part but next month I'm going for a different color. If you want to take a guess of the colors down below feel free I have them in mind and you can watch that video next week. And now is when I realized that I had in fact made a mistake so I'm going to use a black acrylograph and I'm literally going to cover all of the numbers because you know I've got to redo them. So I'm going to cover the second two of the 22. I'm going to cover half of the three from the 23 because I can use the top part to form a two and then I'm going to cover the 24 as well. This pains me to do this but it's fine it looks okay it's not a big deal. Once I've covered them you can technically see them at this angle and under this lighting but when you turn the page at certain angles it's totally fine and it's not that visible and the nature of acrylographs is that you can layer them because they're acrylic paints which means that once they've completely dried you can go over the top with them with a different color and you can completely erase the color that you had there before so now that I've done that I'm slightly impatient um, so I'm literally going to start going over them now they were not fully dry even though the surface was dry you should definitely wait but I was impatient because I needed to continue filming and I needed to hurry up to fix this I'm going to put a little one here I was like how am I supposed to deal with this because I have a box with Friday the 21st on the left and then I have a whole like time block area with an F and then 21 as well I'm just gonna have both of them it's totally fine then I'm going to fix up the three that's supposed to be a two for 22 now I understand that you can't really see this at this angle so let me just fix these numbers and then I will show you what it looks like under specific lighting conditions because it does actually work out okay. Here you can see and problem fixed. I'm very happy with how it turned out in the end. I'm annoyed that I made the mistake in the first place but hey mistakes happen and we just learn and we move on and it is totally fine. My next spread is going to be incorporating a Dutch door. Now because I have decided that I feel like my weeks are going to need to be more structured I'm not going to be using rolling weeklies at the moment or for the next couple of weeks because I just need to be on top of everything before I leave so I'm going to go for a planned weekly. Now I haven't done planned weeklies in months because I just haven't had anything that I needed to plan for so I'm very excited to get back into doing planned weeklies and this is my first planned weekly. The idea is that I'm going to have a Dutch door, which you've just seen me cut out, and I'm going to have little boxes for every single day of the week. I'm first, of course, going to do my week 43 title, and I'm going to alternate the orange and the white this time. I haven't done that before for at least my October spreads, so I'm pretty excited to do that. Whilst I was filming this, I was like, mm, is it going to turn out okay? Is it not? I think it turns out pretty cool. Although spacing-wise, I could have like handled that a little bit better, but I am pretty satisfied of the overall look. The effect that I decided to go for with these letters is kind of an overlapping one, so each of the letters is underneath the next letter, and then I'm just using the acrylograph, I did originally have it spaced out with a pencil but I don't know if you can tell but the three at the bottom kind of finishes like higher up on the page and I wanted it to take up the entire page so I ended up just kind of like restructuring it as I'm painting on the letters so I just kind of slide them down ever so slightly whilst I am doing all of my drawings so it looks like this. Of course once I finish all of my letters I have to go in with the black acrylograph to draw in all of the coral pieces. So you've seen me do this so many times already so you know what to expect and you know how it works or at least I hope you do and if you don't you can watch many of my other videos where I continue doing the same thing. Once I've done that it is time to do the letters of the week. So I'm going to do the same idea that I took for week 42 and I'm going to have a big capital letter in block style at the top and then I'm going to have the numbers either underneath or next to the number depending on how big the letter is. To start off with I'm just going to show you how I traced everything out. I do have pencil markings underneath rest assured I'm not doing this free handed and then I'm going to color it in and here is a quick time lapse of me finishing the M and then we'll move on to just popping on the other elements to this page. Once 
once I've obviously laid down my letters, I go back in with my coral with the black acrylograph and let's just speed through this one more time. Once I've finished the decorations for the first four days of the week, let's quickly do the back. I forgot to explain a little bit about this particular spread. The idea is that I'm going to have a time block schedule yet again, and then I'm going to have my to-do list on the right page. The right page is going to have a disorganized to-do list. It's basically just brainstorming goals as they come to me, and then I'm going to assign them to a time blocked period during the week. Of course, I understand that most of the days of my week are going to be at work, so I will block off those entire periods. But then for the days that I'm no longer working, I'm going to be using that to do all of the things that I need to get done before I leave. In my original plan with me for my monthly spreads for October, I used a black acrylograph to do some of the coral on the black paper. Now, because of the nature of the colors, it doesn't really show up all that well, but in this case, it's exactly the effect that I'm kind of going for. You can tell that it's there, but it's also nice and discreet, so if you needed to write over the top of it, it's also fine. The reasoning behind this is so that I can have a clear distinction or separation between the days of the week, because all of them are very stuck together, and I don't really want to draw a solid line down the middle of my page. So I'm just going to add on some black acrylograph corals just between the M and the T for Monday and Tuesday. The same thing between the W and the T on the next page. And then the same thing again between the F and the S on the page afterwards. And one more between the S and the to-do tasks on the next page. I'm also going to use a pencil just to calculate where my spacing is going to be. Because this one is a time block one again, I'm not going to write the times of the day, but I'm going to have like an understanding in my head that that's going to be there. And because I haven't put any dedicated space for any specific tasks or events that I've got on that week. I'm also going to draw a line at the very bottom of the time block period in this silver acrylograph. The idea is that underneath the line, I'm going to have my shifts Although that could fit into the time block period. But anyway, we'll see what exactly I end up doing. And then above that is going to be time blocked zones. So again, if you're unfamiliar with time blocking, you can check out one of the videos on my channel. I have talked about it in detail in several different videos. Finally, we move on to my review page. Now my review page is my most important page every single month. I love reviewing my month because it's a time for me to sit down and reflect on the things that went well, the things that didn't go well, the things that I'm advancing on and to brainstorm some goals for the next month. I love going over my review page as well for smaller things such as music movies series because I do like to see what I was watching in previous months. It is something pretty new to this year. I've only started doing that this year because before I wasn't really interested but now I am because I want to be more intentional with the things that I'm watching especially TV and movies because I only want to be watching things that are either adding value to my time or entertaining me where I'm not wasting my time specifically. I know that's a really broad thing to say because all TV is entertaining. Well not all TV is entertaining but most TV is entertaining and most TV wastes your time, but I want to be watching things that I find relevant or beneficial to my life instead of just watching random things that just pop up on Netflix. In an attempt to do that, I want to refine my taste. Every time I watch something on Netflix, it has to be something that I'm fully paying attention to, so I can't be watching Netflix on the background whilst I'm doing something else because I don't want to be a person who multitasks things in their life because I feel like multitasking just doesn't work. At least in my brain or in my life, I cannot multitask. If I'm multitasking, I will end up just procrastinating both of the things that I'm supposed to be doing. So I just end up focusing solely on one thing at a time. And I think for me personally, that works really well. For other people, it might not. But for me, I'm going to be single tasking from now on. Unless it's cooking and cleaning, in which case I will listen to some music. For the words review, again, I'm reimagining certain letters that have to be incorporated. I can get the R, the E from the word October, but the rest of the letters do have to sort of be invented. And because I've written out the word ambassador uh, team in a previous video, or previous spread. Actually, no, I didn't even film it, but it's on my Instagram if you wanted to have a look. I've already started reimagining what some letters are going to look like. Once I have written the word review, I'm going to add in my coral decorations. I'm also going to go over the word review in the orange acrylograph two times just to increase that opacity because we love it when it's nice and opaque. After adding in some coral details, I'm also going to add a couple in white. I'm going to write out the different sections that I want to review at the end of the month. I don't really change the things that I review each month because because I just have a consistent thing that I want to review. But just to list them out in case you have not seen one of my videos before or you'd like to learn a bit more, the things that I review are my positives and negatives, the series and the movies that I watch, as well as the music that I listen to. For music, I like to list specific songs, songs that make me feel something during the month and songs that I listen to obsessively every single day of the month. I also like to write how many subscribers I have on YouTube at the beginning and at the end of the month and how many followers on Instagram I have. 
Then at the very top, I'm going to write brainstorming goals because I like to brainstorm my goals before. Now, previously I did have a section for my moods, but because I've moved to a black journal, it is a little bit harder to translate the colors onto the journal and I haven't done that yet, which is really, really bad, but I will get around to it at some point. Anyway, at the beginning of October, I had 990 subscribers on YouTube and I had 6,939 followers on Instagram. So we will see how many I have at the end of the month, whether I have more or whether I have less, we will find out and that is my review page. So let's go over the three pages that I've just set up today. So to start off with, I have my week 42. I think it looks so, so cool. I'm glad that I resolved the issue of like wrongly putting the Friday the 22nd, which is supposed to be Friday the 21st. Then we have a week 43. And finally, we have my review page. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. If you are looking for some more inspiration for October weekly spreads or any other kind of plan with me in a blackout bullet journal, you can watch this video next.